It's been a while since I posted a video, and just to give you some insight, the family and I have been down with COVID and we're slowly making a recovery. Things have been put on hold, and I'm finally starting to get back on track with some reviews. Thanks for bearing with me while things get back to normal. Unfortunately, SHOT Show was a no-go for me this year. I was hoping to make it, but due to work, family, and now the Kung Flu, it just didn't work out. Just like you, I'm hoping to see some really cool shit revealed for this year. And I'm also hoping to see this whole pistol brace band fiasco work itself out. If you want my two cents, don't go jumping on that quote unquote free tax stamp just quite yet. Let this thing play out, see what happens closer to that 120 day mark. My guess is going to get shot down, but we got to be smart, take a look at the bigger picture, and not rush into anything. We have some time. Before we dive into today's video, I have to give a thank you to our channel sponsors. Tag Firearms was nice enough to send out this Acro P2 for this review. If you want to pick one up for yourself, I know they still have a few in stock. Head over to the website, use my discount code 715 Tactical at checkout, and save some money on your order. Tag Firearms stocks a lot of the hard to get items in today's market, so don't sleep on your chance to add something cool to your arsenal. Black Dot Ammunition supplied the ammo as they do for the majority of my videos. If you're looking for quality ammo at an affordable price, Check them out, use that same code 715 Tactical at checkout. Let's dive in. We all know that red dots on handguns are the future, but I'm thinking that open emitter red dots are becoming a thing of the past. At first glance, it might look like I have a mailbox mounted on my Glock 17. Nope, just the Aimpoint Acro P2. Closed emitter red dots are starting to become a very popular offering for handguns. Unlike traditional red dots where the emitter is located on the outside of the housing, the Acro P2 has a fully enclosed emitter, which means it will not get obstructed by dirt or debris. Look at the RMR. When dirt gets on the emitter, it can cause your dot to look broken up or be hardly visible in the window, rendering it unusable. Now, there's a few closed emitters out there, such as the Steiner MPS and the Holosun 509T, but I think the Acro P2 is the gold standard. Let's get some of the technical specs out of the way. The 3.5 MOA dot is powered by a single CR2032 battery, giving it a 5-year or 50,000 hour battery life. Now the battery life of the original Acro wasn't anything close to that, so I'm glad Aimpoint made that necessary upgrade. The body is made from 7075T6 high strength hard anodized aluminum. It has 10 brightness settings, including 4 night vision settings. The brightest settings are definitely daylight visible. I've always had that good luck with Aimpoint, their dots are super bright. You can still blow this thing out on a sunny day. I haven't tested out the night vision settings, but I'm definitely going to give that a try in the near future. Weighing in at only 2.1 ounces, the P2 definitely looks a lot heavier than it actually is. When it comes to mounting, there's a variety of options out there. I'm using a forward controls plate to mount it to my Glock 17 MOS. Now just like everybody else out there, I am not the biggest fan of Glock's MOS system and I've always had good luck with the forward control plates. If you want to throw one of these on a Glock MOS system, trust me when I say this is the way. You can get these plates for around 70 bucks. The P2 isn't just made for handguns, it can also be mounted on carbines, shotguns, or used as a backup sight on magnified optics. This is a Steiner MPS mounted on this Vortex Razor 1-6. But yeah, you get the idea. For those of you wondering, the Steiner MPS does share the same footprint as the P2. Just figured I would throw out that little piece of info. Zeroing the P2 was really simple, and it only took a few shots to get it down. After a few hundred rounds, the P2 didn't lose zero, and it held up just fine. Inside the box is this multi-tool that Aimpoint gives you. I haven't really used a tool, but I did use these fix-it sticks to install the sight and make my adjustments. This is the first time using these tools, and I wish I had them a while ago. These are the most convenient tools to have while at the range. I highly recommend these things and suggest you give them a try. I'll leave a link to the Fix-It Sticks website pinned in the comments section of this video. Looking through the window of the P2 makes for an easy shooting experience. Now the window isn't as big as the Steiner MPS, but trust me when I say, it's plenty big and it's very easy to acquire your target. This is a parallax free optic meaning the visible dot remains parallel to the bore of your gun no matter what angle your eye is in relation to the sight. When the dot is on target, that's where your impact will be. 
When you shoot with both eyes open, you can really place shots on target with some speed and proficiency. When it comes to red dots on handguns, I like having backup irons that I can still use if my dot goes down. I'm using night vision MOS specific sights to match up with this P2. I have a yellow tritium front because I want to be able to distinguish the dot from the front sight without hesitation. I love night vision sights and I've used them on numerous handguns. The brightness adjustments are made with these buttons on the left side of the optic. It's a dummy proof design. Simply push up or down to adjust and hold the down button to shut the optic off. The buttons have a nice tactile feel to them and so do the turrets for making your windage or elevation adjustments. The P2 feels like quality in hand. Compared to the Steiner MPS, I personally feel like they're a horse apiece. Now I've heard through the rumor mill that the MPS has had some quality control issues, but I can't confirm that to be true. I've heard stories of the glass falling out and the sights randomly stop working, but again, I can't confirm that, so take it as you will. What I can say about the MPS is that I have zero issues with mine and it's performed just as well as this P2. Now which one would I take if I had to make the choice? I'd probably stick with the P2. Aimpoint has a track record to put your mind at ease when it comes to duty grade products. I have beaten the ever living shit out of some of my Aimpoint optics and they still run like new. My final thoughts. The Acro P2 is a downright ugly dot. Let's be real, it's like a red dot in a microwave eloped and produced a baby. With that aside, it's a workhorse of an optic. Duty grade is an understatement. I think this dot will go to hell and back and keep running. I love the concept of the closed emitter. Knowing I can take this thing through the elements and all will be good, that's a bit of relief. The mounting system seems pretty solid. It hasn't come loose and it's staying tight. The clarity in the glass is also on the plus side. Like I said before, it's very easy to pick up your target through this glass. Closed emitter dots are the future, and I think we're going to be seeing a lot more hitting the market this year. Some of you are probably wondering about this holster setup. It's a Safari Land designed specifically for the G17 with an Acro and a Surefire X300. It covers the window of the Acro, keeping rain, snow, whatever elements off the glass. It's added protection, and I love this setup. If you guys want to pick up an Acro P2, head over to Tag Firearms, and don't forget to use that code 715 Tactical at checkout. I hope you guys are able to take something away from this video or simply enjoyed the show. As always, thank you for stopping in, stay vigilant, and I will see you next time.